Hey guys, are you wanting to build your very own website? Well, there's too many website builders and providers out there online. And most of the well-known ones can cost you over hundreds to thousands of dollars per year. And that's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Zamp, which lets you run a database for your site and start a web server with one click. And Zamp lets you virtually build any kind of website or blog with no technical experience. So let's get started by first opening your browser. And you can either find Zamp by doing a quick Google search, or you can head directly to apachefriends.org and then clicking download. Believe it or not, but Zamp is actually available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And for this video, I'll be going with the Windows option, but it should work pretty much the same way for any platform that you're using. My golden rule is to never install anything on my computer unless I have to. And thankfully there is a portable option available for Zamp. From the download page, let's click on more downloads. And here we'll select Zamp Windows and step inside the latest or stable version that you see. You'll notice there are a number of different options available here, including the installer. But we're actually gonna download the zip file so we don't need to install anything. Once you have Zamp downloaded, just navigate to where the zip file is located on your computer. And then let's open up the contents. You'll notice that everything is inside a folder called Zamp. Let's find a dedicated folder where we can extract Zamp to your computer. And then just click and drag the Zamp folder to that directory. Once it's unzipped, let's step inside the Zamp folder and locate setup underscore Zamp, which is a bat file. For most people, you will need to run this file to make sure that Zamp gets set up correctly from that path. The only time that you don't need to run setup underscore Zamp is if you literally placed the Zamp folder on the root of the C drive. So if you placed it here, you can completely skip the step. Okay, now let's start the Zamp control panel by opening Zamp-control.exe. You do have the option to select from two different languages, but I'll be going with US or English. Once you have the control panel open, let's click start next to the MySQL module. For security reasons, you'll have to click allow to let Zamp to start the MySQL server. Let's do the same thing for Apache by clicking start next to it and then clicking allow. And now you should have your Apache server running alongside the MySQL server. So let's see if we can hit our web server locally by starting a browser and then navigating to localhost. You should land on a welcome screen from Zamp if everything is working correctly. Next, let's try to access localhost slash phpMyAdmin to manage the database for our website, blog, or whatever it is that you're trying to build. By default, PHP My Admin lets anyone on the server access your databases. That's not good. And plus, if you head over to user accounts, you'll see that the root user absolutely has no password. And that's the user that typically has the power to do anything. So let's fix this by requiring the browser to ask for credentials next time. First, let's make sure that we stop Apache and MySQL using the ZAMP control panel. Right after that, go to the ZAMP directory and step inside the PHP My Admin folder. Look for a file called config.inc.php and let's open it using our favorite text editor. There's two changes that we need to make here. First, let's set the auth underscore type value to cookie, which forces the browser to ask for credentials. Then make sure you add a password for the root user for obvious security reasons. Now we just need to save and close out of this file. We're headed back to the ZAMP folder so we can start the control panel again. And just like before, we'll be starting Apache and MySQL. If you use your browser to navigate back to PHP MyAdmin, unlike before, 
it'll now take you to the login screen instead of automatically logging you in. However, there's still one more security problem. We can still log in using the root user without any password. That's because if you head to user accounts, our root user still has no password set in MySQL. But you can fix this by clicking edit privileges next to the root user. Then go to change password to get one added. Just keep in mind that there's more than one root user here because there's more than one way to access the server. So be sure to set the same password for all three of these. And after you do this, if you automatically get locked out, it means that it actually worked. You shouldn't be able to log in without a password anymore. So try to do this using the new one that you just set and you'll be logged in successfully. To log out of PHP my admin at any time, you can find the logout icon next to home on the top left. And now shifting our attention back to the ZAMP control panel. You may have noticed that we manually had to start Apache and MySQL each time ourselves, but this can definitely be annoying and get tiring over time. You can easily fix this by clicking on config from the top right of the ZAMP control panel, and then just click the Apache MySQL and any other modules that need to automatically start. And if you're a fan of having ZAMP just a minimized when it starts, you have that option as well. Let's click save to apply these changes. So if you quit ZAMP control panel and start it up again, don't worry if you don't see it in your taskbar. It's because we chose to start it minimized. And of course you can see that Apache and MySQL started automatically for us. So now we're ready for the next big step and that's building a website or blog. So using the browser, let's navigate to wordpress.org and click on get WordPress. You should be able to download the latest zip file that's provided there. And at this point, by the way, for those of you who are feeling empowered, there's also an installation guide that you can follow that's fairly up to date. But let's continue with setting up our site by navigating to where you downloaded WordPress. Let's open up the zip file and look inside the WordPress folder, which is what we need. We'll jump back to our ZAMP directory and then step inside the htdocs folder. This is basically where each web application or file can be viewed from the browser. And you'll need to create a folder with the name of your website. And then we'll unzip everything that's inside the WordPress folder from the zip file. So after that, start ZAMP if you don't already have it running. We need to log into phpMyAdmin again because we'll be adding a database specifically for our website. Click on databases and then let's get one created. And you can call this whatever you want. But just make sure that you set the database collation to utf underscore general underscore ci. And then after that, click create and your database should be added and visible. Something else that we need to do is to create a user specifically for accessing this database. Let's click on privileges and then get a new user account added here along with a password. Just make sure that you've checked grant all privileges on the database for minimum security. Then go all the way down and click the go button. Perfect. So now that we have our website's database and user created, we need to set that information in our WordPress config file. To do this, just step inside the folder where we unzipped WordPress and first rename the wp-config-sample file by removing the dash sample part. And after that, open the file to make changes and here you'll be doing three things. First, add the name of our website's database that we created earlier. Then add the name of the user that we gave permissions to for accessing our website's database. And once you specify the password for that user, definitely make sure that these are correct. We can now save and then close this file since we're done making changes. 
Then we'll want to open up the browser again and we'll navigate to localhost slash the name of the folder that you created for your website slash wp-admin slash install.php. You'll land on the WordPress install page. Let's select the language that we prefer and then click continue. So here you can specify a few things that are pretty important for your website. The site title is what you want your website or blog to be called, which typically shows up on the title of each page. And if you're getting nervous, don't worry, since you have the option to change this later. And then after that, you need to give it a username for how you log in to the website as the owner. And it doesn't need to be anything fancy and you can use something like admin if you want. Then set a password that you don't forget because this is how you're gonna manage your entire website. And if it's relevant, you can also use a valid email address here to identify your account. Finally, whether or not you wanna check search engine visibility is entirely up to you. The only benefit to turning this on is that it allows search engines to find your website. But that's only if you decided to host the website online in the future. So once you have everything filled out, let's click install WordPress. And within a few seconds, you should be able to see that your website is up and running. Let's click login. This is where you'll be able to log in for managing your website content. But before we do that, let's see what it looks like so far by clicking go to my blog. By default, WordPress does give you a super basic bare bones template. For now, just understand that you have new posts, comments, as well as pages that can be added. So let's return to the website login page and use the credentials that we just specified during installation. Once you're logged in, you can easily add new posts and then instantly publish them, which appear on your website. And of course, your visitors can add new comments at any time for reacting to your content. And you can also add different pages to represent your blog, website, or business the way that you want. Personally, my favorite part about WordPress is the customization. So for example, you can easily go to themes after logging in and you can add and apply from hundreds of different options. As you can see here, I'm changing my entire website's theme to Astra. And once I click activate and then jump back to my website, that theme gets applied instantly while my content stays untouched. So I hope this helped you get a jump start into making your website using your own computer. And in the future, I plan on doing more videos with WordPress for being able to do things like write custom code for how pages are being displayed on your website and find free WordPress plugins for giving your website superpowers. Thanks for watching. And for more on creating websites using XAMPP or WordPress, please consider subscribing to this channel.